Ja. Okay, what page is that, Mo? Mechanical oscillations. Okay, so page 71. Um, okay, there's a little bit of vocabulary here, but I think. Yeah, hooks law. Okay. Right. So, just a little bit of uh, definitions, or just firstly, even just a little bit of ideas. So in physics, when we talk about mechanical oscillations, normally we're talking about things like a spring or a pendulum or anything that's moving with a sort of regular pattern back and forth. So here that's one and then here pendulum swinging back and forth like that. That's another example there. Um, I mean, there's many. There's many, but these are the two most common. What is a common situation in physics? So we have done two types of motion. We've done linear, and we have our S, U, V, A, T equations. And then what did we do after that? Circular. Circular. And then we have our equations for that. So now this is a new type of motion. <coughs> and there's a name for this type of motion. Do you know it? It's called simple harmonic, harmonic motion. Uh, no. There's a, there's a list of about 24 experiments you can do in physics class here. And you have to do four of them. And I promise you, I picked the four easiest ones. So no resistivity, no... No, 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 there, there's, um, there's Newton's second law, Ohm's law, Snell's law, and then... Um, Snell's law. Kirchhoff's. Sorry. No, no, hang on, let me think, sorry. Newton's second law, Ohm's law, Snell's law, and calculate in small g. Thank you. Uh, so, yes. I picked the four easiest and also the four safest ones as well. Don't even want to kill themselves. Um, okay, so simple harmonic motion. So this is motion, I won't do the formal definition yet, but this is just motion that kind of has a back forth to it. Oscillation, yeah. Um, all of these types of motion, they share one thing in common. There's an idea that there's a start and then it extends out and then comes back to the start. So these, you know, you can call these like cycles. So for the pendulum, it would start here, would swing out and swing back. That's one cycle. And just like with our circular motion, we let big T equal the time for one cycle or as you said, periodic time, or the period, periodic time. Is that okay? It's the same in the circle. Now, introducing a new idea. Can I scroll down? Yeah. So now we're going to look at a new word. Oops, I have my pen gone, sorry. Frequency. So, we're really actually on page 72. Does anyone know what frequency means? No, no, like an, ex an explanation. I know the formula. How often the amount of oscillation. Very good, yeah. 
So frequency is the number of cycles per second. Okay, so for example, e.g., if t equals 0 0.25 seconds, then what would f equal? So if it takes a quarter of a second to swing, how many can you do per second? 1 OT. No, no, give me a number. No, 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 don't take out the calculator. If it takes a quarter of a second to do something, how many of them can you do in a second? Four. Four. Oh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> no, no, don't, no, don't do that. Like, oh, of course, four. Why didn't I think of that? Yeah, four. Now, there is a formula to calculate it. As somebody said a moment ago, you can get the F by saying F equals one over... So that's the F then. Yeah. Same T we're talking about, yeah. Uh, we haven't actually done that, but yes, you can relate it to that as well. Okay. Now, if you think about it, if you look here, do you have that? Yeah. yeah. If you think about it, when something is traveling in a circle, it has the same idea of repeating. So you start here, and you go around, and finish back there. So. It's also true for a circle, you can talk about the frequency as 1 over t. So I'm just going to say here, for a circle, or simple harmonic motion, this formula is always true. So in that case, what's one period? Is that one? One it's loop, space. yeah. So don't think about it as something unrelated. It's still related to the last topic, yep. Yeah. Yes. Oh, yes. Definitely. Okay. Uh, right. Can I scroll down? Yeah. So we know when we have motion in a circle, what's special about the force for a circle? What do we know? It's always towards the center, isn't it? Huh? Yeah, so it's the acceleration also direct towards yeah, center. Yeah. Now, for simple harmonic motion, like with a spring, okay, in a similar way, the force always acts uh, against the motion. So, for example, um, if we move this to the right, now, of course, this makes sense. If I move it to the right, the force is to this direction, to the left. So then when I let go, it moves that way. And what's special about the force, we have this formula. The force is proportional. Do you know this one? Proportional? Not quite length, but you're close. Extension. Extension, yeah. Extension. Delta x. What do I mean by delta x? The change, you're right. So here's the spring. And it's important here that this is not moving. And then someone comes along and then they pull it a distance delta x. That's what delta x means. And as you said, Joshua, the name for this is the extension. Yeah? Now, some books use the letter E. I don't like that. We use delta X. What did you use? Okay, X2 minus X1. X2 minus X1, yeah. You used E? Okay. Um, yeah, this actually... If you don't want the proportional, you can write the formula like this. The force equals K, which is a constant. Yeah, delta X. So K is a constant of the spring. 
And there's a name for it. Uh, I think we call it the stiffness constant. What were you going to say? Elasticity constant also, yeah, or stiffness constant, yeah. Or stiffness. Or stiffness, yeah. Um, I wonder what they go for in this book, actually, for it. Yeah, let's have a look. Let's have a look. Um, no, nope, they went for something different. So we said stiffness constant. Uh, what did you say, Joshua? Elasticity or stiffness. Uh, in the book, they decided not to go for any of these names, and they called it, anyone else? Spring constant. Spring constant, yeah. That's Does, how they call it. It's spring constant, all right. Uh, there's, so there's many different names for this. Spring constant is one, elasticity, stiffness, uh, but spring constant. And I need to check the formula book. I don't know what they call it in that. I'll just call it spring constant for the moment. And um, this formula, though, is actually, uh, has a name. Does anyone know the name of it? Def formula. I like it. It's called Def formula. What is it? Yeah, Hooke's law. You're right. Yeah. Um, Hooke has an E at the end, doesn't he, in his name? Hooke's law. Well, I guess we can't ask him. Uh, Hooke's law. What? Yeah, actually, I think the difference is his name doesn't have an E in it. Anyways, what are you asking? Um, are we going to be asked to speak to an exam? Yes. Like, yes. define the formula. Oh, sometimes they can just ask for the formula and sometimes in words. They usually, yeah. when, when they talk about the laws, they give it to Mark and if you just write the formula, you see one. Yeah, but sometimes they only ask for the formula. Sometimes they do. Okay. Um, what's the units for K? N, 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 N minus one. Uh, It'd be uh, Newton's per meter, wouldn't it? Yeah, it's meter. Yeah, so Newton per meter. All right, let's have a look at our first example then. Okay, can we have a look at it, Jeff? Can I scroll down? Yep, okay, so let's take an example here. So here's my spring, um, and let's make it easy. Let's say it's 0 0.3 meters, and then I come along, and I stretch it to 0 0.4 meters. And um, let's, say, let's say I do this by pulling on it with a force of 10 newtons. But now it's not moving again. So I would like the K. So we know that there will be a force this way. How big will this force be? 10. So from Hooke's law we have 10 equals K delta X. Yeah, now what's the delta x? 0 0.1. Yes? Yeah. Why is it 0 0.1, Mo? Because the change is like... Point yes, it's a change. So then k would be 100 newtons per meter. So this is the constant for this spring. And I think you're saying, Tal, there is an experiment in the lab where you hang different weights on a spring yeah, to get yeah, the K. Yeah, yeah. You did that one? I think it's the worst experiment ever. Yeah. Everything is so not precise. Yeah. Because of the, because of the spring. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, can I go on to a more difficult example, maybe? Can I scroll down? Yeah. Okay. So here's one. Oh wait, well firstly, uh, we'll again go with 0 0.4 meters, and then <coughs> I hang a weight here, uh, let's say it's 100 grams, and now let's say this is 0 0.5 meters here. Okay, 
I want everybody to calculate the K for me for this spring. Give me the K. Ah, you, uh, you do. I, all I did was all I did was hang a weight on the spring. So the force comes from the weight pulling it down. What were you asking me? You got the idea? So give me the K. I want the K. I'll wait for everybody, yeah. Yeah. No, it's okay. So you have an answer? Yeah, okay. Hmm? Yeah, what did you get? Ten. Ten? Yeah. So here the weight is zero point one G. So that the up force here must cancel it. So you have F equals 0 0.1 G. So K delta X equals 0 0.1 G. So K equals 0 0.1 G over 0 0.1. So G, yeah, so 9.81. So 0 0.1 kg. Huh? What's wrong? A kilograms. Ah, oh, but this is 0 0.1 gravity G. Oh. Not the same. Uh, so you got roughly 10. Newtons per meter. Yeah? What's wrong? Are you sure? What? The difference, the extension. Yes. Okay, I'm going to go scroll down now. Right. Uh, can I scroll down? Yes, okay. Right, so here's another one for you to try. Uh, the K is 12 newtons per meter, and the length here is 0 0.5 meters. And I now come along and hang a weight here of one kilogram. I would like to know how far it moves down. What's the distance it moves down? I want this. The final, final. The final length? Or yeah. the delta? No, just the delta. Yeah. Then why did you give us the first one? I don't know. I'm hungry. Thinking about lunch, you don't need the 0 0.5, you're right. So we have, when it hangs down, so the forces are balanced, the delta only. Yeah, do you want the final the delta? The delta X only, <laughs> please. <laughs> yeah, so we have F equals K delta X, so 1G equals K delta X, so delta X is... 9.81 over 12, isn't it? Yeah, yeah so 0 0.8175. Okay. Whatever. What else? What else? All right. I'm going on to something else now. So we're we're happy with Hooke's law. Yeah. Yeah. Now, um, we in this situation it's not moving, okay? Because it's in equilibrium, right? But if somebody was now to come along, um, so what was that, 0 0.5 and then 0 0.8, what was it, 8.2? Yeah, whatever, yeah. If somebody was to come along and then just move this a little bit, what would happen? It would start going up and down. So you put the weight on it and it drops down, yes? And then if you were just to pull it or to flick it or something, it would start to move. Okay? That's the simple harmonic motion I'm talking about. Uh, so there's some more formulas for that motion. Let's see what ones they give you first. Um, yeah. Oh, well, we'll go, we'll go first with the acceleration. All right, so... Uh, here is my mass, 
And let's imagine it's going back and forth like this. Okay? It's going back and forth like that. And the distance from here to here and here to here are the same. And we call this distance A. And I'm sure somebody knows what the A stands for. Yeah? What? Amplitude. Okay? So A is the amplitude. It means like the maximum it can be from the starting point. Maximum displacement, you're right. Maximum displacement. A equals maximum displacement. Or amplitude. Okay, so that's the A. We also have some other formulas. So we know what letter tells us how long this takes. T, isn't it? So that's the time. Okay, so our first formula is F. What does the F equal? 1 over 2. Now our second formula is the acceleration. Or actually, or even the force. Don't you need Why does the omega x? Omega squared x? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Don't you You're right. So we need to allow her for that. So we'll call that x. So it say it's x from the center. Or delta x, whatever. You have a formula for the f. Equals m. Well... We can just use Hooke's law. Yeah. Mk, so... Actually, F is proportional to x. So that's not a formula yet. But it's giving you the idea that as the x gets bigger, there's more force pulling it back to the center. Yeah? Okay. Um, I, I don't know how many formulas to do with you. Yeah. Um, shh. Teacher Tinker. Okay. So the formula for the F equals, if it's going to the left, it should be minus, shouldn't it, in this picture, minus M omega squared X. Now I haven't told you what the omega is. This F here. Is it? Oh, that's the acceleration. Oh, oh. You're right. If I just use Newton's second law, I get A equals minus omega squared x. But I haven't told you what the omega is, but you already know it from circular motion. The omega uh, is to do with... Well, what's the formula for omega, actually? Omega equals... Yeah, but the other one, with the, without the theta in it. 2 pi over t. Yeah, yeah. No, that's another form. Yeah, we're just talking about the one we did. Yeah. So this is how we can get the omega. But wait, uh, you need to be careful here. Please be careful. Um, what did the omega mean when we did circular motion? What was the meaning of the omega? It was how quickly the angles changing, wasn't it? But there's no angle here in this motion. So what's the meaning of the omega? Well, it means this. Uh, but we have to use our imagination. Actually, if I have a circle here, it'd be good. Okay, so we know from circular motion, it's going around like this. So the omega is how quickly the angle changes. Now, um, 
Can you imagine, as I'm going around here, imagine that I have a light, and the light is making a shadow in the center here. So for example, when the ball is here, there's a shadow here. When the ball is here, there's a shadow here. And when the ball is here, there's a shadow here. So as this is going around, what's happening to the shadow here? It's going, going back and forth. Now what type of motion is that? That's what we're doing today. Simple harmonic motion. But please let me finish first, Tanish, and then I can repeat. So this is going around in a circle, and the shadow here is going back and forth. Remember when we did the projectiles, I said a good way to think about it is when the projectile is moving, it's like there's a shadow on the ground, and it moves with constant velocity. And then this shadow here goes up, and then back down. So likewise with the circle, picture we have something going in circular motion, and there's a horizontal here, when it starts here, it's here. When it's up here, it's here. And when it's over here, it's over here. So this goes around, and then this one will go out, and then back. This motion here is the motion we're doing today. And that omega, that omega, what it means is, if you could draw a circle around the motion, you're talking about that angle that's changing. That is okay. I'll give you another example. Uh, you know with a train? Um, here. So you know with a train, we have uh, the wheel is like this, and then you have your big piston here, and it goes uh, across like that, and it moves around, because this is going back and forth. Yes? yes. So if you look here, you have a little uh, mechanism going back and forth, pushing this Is around the wheel. No, 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 no. Wait, don't interrupt me, please. If you need to ask a question, put up your hand. So this is going around. So this has an omega. It's circular motion, right? And then this is going back and forth. So this is simple harmonic motion. And what I'm saying is, imagine you were just looking at this, and I said, here's the omega, and you say, hang on, there's no angle. What does omega mean? There's no angle. And I say, you need to imagine it's connected to a circle. The meaning of the omega is how quickly the circle will turn. Okay, another example would be, um, you know the sewing machine? So you put your foot down, and your foot goes up and down, and then the wheel turns and you can sew, like the old sewing machine. Yeah. So your foot going up and down is simple harmonic motion. Yeah. But it turns a wheel, circular motion. Okay? So the reason simple harmonic motion comes after circular motion is there is a relationship between the two. And that relationship is the omega. So that's how you get the omega from that formula from circular motion. Yes? It is. Yeah. So finding the omega has to find that one. Yeah. But don't think about it too much like that. The point I'm just making is that's how you interpret the omega, and that's why you can use the omega from circular motion chapter. Because there is that relationship. It depends a little bit more logical than omega. Um no. I mean, there is. Yeah, but that angle has nothing to do with the circular angle. Okay. Um so actually, it would be more confusing. Okay, so I just ha I have those formulas so far. We know the m, we know the x, and we can have a formula for the omega. It's two pi over t, and we have the f there. Okay. Uh, no, no, what are you doing? You do, you don't do that. I'll tell you when you're finished. Okay. I feel. Uh, no, no. You know when when you turn windows off, you get start shut down, and then it goes. What's the chill when it shuts down? What? You know, when you turn your computer off, okay. it makes a certain sound, doesn't it? Yes. Yeah. That, that, yeah. That's different in the computer. It does, you're right, but you know the yeah, sound yeah, very yeah, computer, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. So I'm saying, as a teacher, you hear a certain sound that means the class is shutting down at the end. I'm telling you, no. No. It's in the way you think it's breaking. 
I know, but you're wasting precious time now. I just have one thing left to do with you, and then you can go. Yes? It's okay if you want to know what I no, it's not, because I want my lunch too. All right, so just one thing left to do with you. So, of course, we'll continue this. You're making the sound again, the sound the teacher doesn't like. Yeah, the, sh the shutdown sound, I don't like it. Yes. Now, um, these formulas, of course, we'll continue them next, next time. But the formula that's really important is this one, because... This one gives you the definition of simple harmonic motion. A mass is undergoing simple harmonic motion if the acceleration is Proportional to the displacement because you, yeah, well, don't worry. If you didn't write the word directly, I wouldn't take a mark away. Uh, the acceleration is uh, proportional to the displacement, and there's another thing as well that's important. Center, yeah, but I'll put it the other way. I'll say and is directed against the velocity. So it's always opposite to the way it's moving. So if it's going this way, the force is pulling it back that way. So I'd say uh, proportion to the displacement and directed uh, against uh, the direction of velocity. The, I'll just write the velocity. The velocity, uh, I feel bad saying that. The velocity's uh, direction. Now just listen so you can get the idea in your head, okay? Now just look up and listen for a moment. You can write this in a minute, okay? Yes? Is it, is it directed towards a fixed point? Yeah, it's directed toward, towards a fixed point, yeah. And, um, or... I just felt like saying against the velocity. I just feel like it makes a bit more, it's easier to picture. So if, what I'm saying is, if it's moving this way, the force is pulling it that way, yeah? That's why there's a minus in the formula. Because if x is positive, then what's a? Negative. Yep. Also, it's proportional. What that means is, as the x gets bigger and bigger, uh, the uh, force gets bigger and bigger as well. So the force pulling you this way gets bigger. So as it moves this way, there's more force that way, and then until it stops, and then it falls back. Yeah? Um, yes. I'm not so confident anymore about my opposite velocity. All right. Change the end there. Sorry about that. Directed. Oh, I didn't want to say it, but now I have to. Directed towards the center. Sorry, I just realized because as it moves out, the force is pulling it back to the center. But then when it falls back, which way is the force going? It's still towards the center, but now it's helping it, so it's in the same direction. Yeah, sorry about that. It's only towards the center. Yeah. The minus is there to emphasize the fact that if the x is positive, then the acceleration needs to be negative. And then if the x was negative, what would the a be? It'd be positive. So it's the, you don't need to write it down. Because often in the exam they just want the number, not the plus or the minus. But it's to emphasize the fact that it must be against its uh, displacement. So the more you displace, the more acceleration yeah. goes in the opposite direction. So yeah. you, you can picture this one. Yeah, picture it like that. Like yeah. X is positive, so the force is negative. Yes, yeah. yeah. X is negative, the force is positive. Yeah. X, X displacement. Yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah.
Wait, why did we get confused, officer? No, go ahead, Joshua. What's it? No, I don't know why I guess how x is negative then force is positive. Yeah, but picture x is minus one meter. So you have a minus one for x, but there's a minus in front of the formula. For the square, so it will be. And the square is only on the omega, which can be separated out in brackets. So you can think about it like this. Is that OK? Yeah. And you know how to get the omega. What's the formula for omega? 2 pi over t. And to finish, um, when the particle is at its limit, that x, what does it equal? When it's at its limit? Big A. Big A. Big A. Amplitude. How could you know the word capital A but not big A? Um, yeah, so when it's at its limit, the x is equal to big A, capital A, the amplitude, and then it falls back to the center. Yeah. Is that okay? Yeah. Yeah, hang on. Start. Shut down. Yes.